Hi guys and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So around eight months ago, I made a video on this cool little self-contained web SDR called the Web Triple Eight. Now, if you've not seen that video, I will link that below. But in brief, this is an SDR receiver that connects to your home network and your antennas, which then provides a web browser SDR application called OpenWebRx, which is then available to any computer on your home network or anyone around the world if you choose to share it. Now, in this video, I'll be taking a look at a different firmware for the Web Triple Eight, which allows you to connect to the Web Triple Eight over your network using SDR applications like SDR Console, Thetis, and Power SDR. This new firmware also has built in applications which can turn your Web Triple Eight into a standalone multi band FTA or Whisper skimmer, receiving up to eight bands at once and then feeding those signals into the relevant web databases. The Web Triple Eight firmware is all stored on a micro SD card. So if you already have an up and running setup and you don't want to mess it up, then you can still try this new firmware by writing this new firmware to a separate SD card and then just swap them over. This new firmware is actually a port of Red Patea. Hopefully I said that right, otherwise the pronunciation police will be on my back. But Red Patea firmware contains a collection of standalone Linux based applications, which will run on this device. Now you can grab the firmware download from this website and that will be linked below as usual. The applications which are ported and available, the first one is called SDR Receiver. Now this supports CW Skimmer and the reverse beacon network. The second, which we will take a look at, is an SDR receiver, which is compatible with HP SDR, such as SDR Console, Thetis, Power SDR, Quisk, and there's a few others as well, which are listed on the website. Now, the third is a dedicated whisper, or weak signal propagation reporter, multi-band receiver, and this decodes whisper messages from up to eight bands at the same time and then automatically uploads them to the Whisper online database. The fourth, which we'll also take a look at, is a multiband FT8 receiver. Again, this can receive up to eight bands at the same time, decode these packets, and then upload them to PSK Reporter website every minute. Now, the fifth app, which we'll not take a look at in this video due to its complex nature and time limit, and that's a GNU radio-supported receiver so that devs can perform experiments or you can create your own software using the Web AAA as the receiver. Now you may notice that the list of ported applications say transceiver. Well, the Web AAA only receives, it does not transmit. The original applications were designed to run on Red Patea, which does actually support transmit. Now to get started, you will need to download the firmware from the page link below and then uncompress that archive contents to a micro SD card. Now the file structure should look like this. Now the apps are located in the app folder and there is actually a little configuration needed if you plan to use either the FT8 decoder application or the Whisper decoder application. Now you may be wondering if the Web AAA also has a real time clock and how to set it if we want to decode FT8 or Whisper transmissions then it needs to know when to take that signal samples. Well, the Web AAA does have an inbuilt GPS receiver, which can be used to set the time and frequency stability of the whole device. There's a dedicated GPS antenna SMA socket where the other sockets are located. Now you can use any generic active GPS antenna and you can get them from most places like Amazon or eBay quite cheaply. Now I'll leave a couple of links below. Now within the FT8 folder, there's a little file called FT8.cron. Now if we open this in a text editor and take a look at the bottom line, we need to remove the hash symbol. Now this is so that this line is ran when the FT8 application runs. Now this line specifically tells the GPS to start up and start updating the system's time once a lock is achieved. Of course, you do need to have that GPS antenna connected for this to work. Now, if you do have one connected, then take a look at the PPS LED on the Web AAA. 
it should be slowly flashing green once it gets a lock. Now save that file and then go on to edit a file called write-c2-files.cfg. Now this file allows you to choose which of the eight bands are decoded at the same time. So just make your changes and then save the file. The last file to edit within the FTA apps folder is this file called upload-fta.sh. At the top of this file, you'll see two fields which are blank. Now these are your call sign and grid fields. Now these must be set in order for the received decoded packets to be uploaded to PSK Reporter. So set your call sign and your maiden head locator. Once you've edited that, just save it and then exit out of that folder. Now if you wanted to also try the Whisper application, then you must also edit the same files within the Whisper app folder. Now it's exactly the same apart from the file name start with Whisper instead of FTA. So once you have these files all edited and saved, you can now pop that micro SD card into the dedicated slot on the web AAA. With your antennas connected and the SDR powered up and connected to your home network, enter web aaalocal into a web browser which is on a computer on the same network. You will then be presented with six clickable links and the first one that we'll click on will be number six. This is the multi-bad FT8 receiver. Now I would recommend leaving this running for as long as possible before checking any data, but after a few minutes you should start to see your received FT8 stations appear on the PSK Reporter website. By entering my own call sign at the top and changing it to show received by, it will then show all the stations that have been received that were transmitting FTA. Now I left mine running overnight, connected to my NFED half wave antenna, which is tuned for 40 to 10 meters. And well, these are the results. My station was receiving FTA transmissions from pretty much all four corners of the world. Each band is represented by a different color pin, but you can drill down to just a single band with the filter options on the top left of this web page. Now the next day I tested the Whisper receiver application and this time it was only for around 30 minutes or so just to make sure that it actually works. Well, here are the results just after 30 minutes or so receiving. Now this specific website is whisper.rocks which appears to have a nice user interface and it clearly shows how many received stations by band on that lower left of the web page. It would be quite interesting to see how this populates if left on permanently. Now one of the issues with the original Web888 firmware is that if you wanted to use it as a local STR receiver with third party software and not rely on the open WebRx application, well, you just couldn't. With this new firmware, if you run HP SDR replication by clicking on link item three, then you'd be able to use supported local applications on your computer, which are on the same network. And what you're seeing here is an SDR application called Thetis. Now this version I have is actually intended to be used with my Hermes Lite 2, but it uses the same protocol as this alternative Web AAA firmware. Now this allows us to use Thetis just like a regular STR application locally across the network. If you are operating your own equipment or if you are in a club station. Papa Alpha 2, Tango India, November, Deca Faith Delta Radio. Another popular SDR application which supports the HP SDR protocol is SDR Console, which in my opinion is an awesome SDR application and most likely most of you would have heard of. And when configuring SDR console to work with the web AAA, simply create a new definition that searches for a Hermes light and the web AAA will be detected. Once connected, you can then use SDR console as a regular SDR application with the web AAA across your local network, just like this. In, um, my old two meter uh, amplifier, I mean, ag amplifier where the, um, oh, many moons ago, probably uh, six, 12 months ago, the, uh, the valve that was in it, um, which was a 4CX350F. Now don't forget, if you are already using a Web AAA as an actual Web SDR using Open Web RX, then you can just swap the micro SD cards to experiment with and then just pop the original firmware back in 
once you've completed your experiments or testing. Anyway, guys, there we go. That's a new alternative firmware for the Web Triple Eight. Let me know if you guys are still rocking your Web Triple Eight and what you use it for. And do you think this new firmware is going to be helpful? Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. A massive shout out to my patrons and YouTube members, and of course, all my subscribers and you guys that watch my videos. It's very much appreciated. Until the next video, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.